because she's got shorts on. Makes life very, very easy. So we know about getting the person on the bed, we know about the massage. So this is normally where we would have arrived at by the town manager's cake. And then from there, I do my twist and turn, okay? Make sure it's neat, because if that bottom tail is neat, it's easy. And this one goes over the top. And then from that point there, I can do my into my anterior leg. Yep, all look familiar? Should do, shouldn't it? Yep, there's nothing, I haven't done anything that's rock and roll yet, there's nothing different. It's all totally the same. Now, when I get to the towel support, in this particular instance, the towel support also serves as other functions. So I do my, my rolled towel, that goes under the knee. Oh, exciting. They must be getting a live feed of Laurie's videos. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, if I was doing that routine that is anterior leg, it pretty much is predominantly in that straight leg position. So, you do your bind manual, you do your kneading, you know, but you're doing it all on the straight line. And we know that, and the reason I put the next video on, is there are other muscle groups involved. So when you think of an anterior leg, it actually comes in three portions. It comes in an anterior leg, adductors, medial part, and our IT band TFL on the lateral part. So iliotibial band being its connective fascia. When you're, someone's working on the outside of your leg and they get stuck into you and you get pain, it's normally not your IT band. Why? Because it's not muscle. It's connective tissue. When you look in the pictures, it's white fascia. It's, it goes from the outside of the hip to the knee and it just creates more leverage. So what is actually hurting? When you, if you get stuck into someone up the side, if I work in here and I go, what, am I, what will cause pain? What am I on? Uh, no. So when I work on the outside, vastus lateralis, vastus lateralis, yes, and what else? Um, Tensor fasciolata. So when you're up the top, he, he goes from the anterior part of the ilium and he inserts into the fibres of, of TF, of um, IT band, round the where the greatest cancer is. Come and have a look at Kate's leg. Grab me a pen. Okay, so what we've got here, when I say lift your leg up, keep it straight and push it to the ceiling. Push up. Right, you can see the muscles here. So, ready? Do it again for me, push up. So there, that's your vastus medialis. Okay, and then we've got on top, that's where your um, your rep fem and your vastus intermedius. And then you've got that bulk of muscle that comes round there, which is vastus lateralis. And all those fibres go into the patella, there's the patella, and they go into the tubular tuberosity here. So relative to where they are. Now when you look here now, you'll see this sort of smooth band here, and that goes onto pezantoritis there, that is your IT band, swinging round. So when you work there, that bulk is muscle. So if I stay on the IT band, I come in here, around, and then when I get to there, that's up where, so that just needs to go, could you just hold that for me? Just put your hands right there for me. So you hold it right there. So there is the anterior part of the ilium. So rec fem, push up for me. There's rec fem, okay? And right next to it, you see that circular muscle there? That is your TFL, and he comes into the iliotibial band there. So he goes out and round like that, and it just creates leverage. So relax for me. So not, it's not always possible to work on that and that in this position. So when you've done your basic routine and you want to affect the other areas, we use this towel for towel management, and we change the shape. So I'll show you the adductors first. I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to just change it. So I actually now... Bring it through, there's the high bit, you hold that. So what I let Kate do is when I lift that leg up now, she has got control over that area. So I can now open the leg out and she's got the towel managed and she's in control. So I don't need the support, it's resting on my hips, so relax. So you see the adductors, there's the adductors. Bring your leg in for me, so just bring it in, so that way. So there, there's the adductors, so you've got pectineus, brevis, longus and magnus, and then the long one which is gracilis, but he's actually short here because he goes past the knee. So I could do my opposing hands effleurage, I can do hand leading hand, I can do um, a little bit of reinforce, 
If I come to the side, I can do my kneading. I can't do ringing. I wouldn't do hacking, cupping, beating. So from there, I can then go into alternate thumbs, etc., etc. So sorry, why, why you can't do uh, ringing? Because in that position with straight arms, it's not a good position for me. So I do more kneading. If I let her hang <coughs> in abduc abduction, okay. there's going to be strain there because of the weight of the legs. So it's not forgiving, and it, it, she just wouldn't like it. You need to keep it short. Okay. Okay. Then when I finish the ductors, then what I can do is. I can say, right, let me have this one back. I need to do uh, some stuff on the outside. So I open out that and I pull that over the body and I say, right, what I need you to do now for me is to turn onto your side facing that one. Okay. So as she turns there now, this one again goes to be my modesty one. Okay. So literally, by folding it up and placing it between the knees, it's going to maintain modesty in the middle. And then from there, I'm going to just tuck that one underneath and that one underneath. And then I pull high into clothes. So I'm now sideways on. I then come round the bed. Sorry, guys. Thanks for coming. <laughs> the bolster between the knees stops her knees moving together, which is an increased adduction, which would be sore. So I can now do sideways on, there's my effleurage, there's my, um, my reinforced, there's my bimanual. I wouldn't do too much kneading on IT band, it's a cord, mm -hmm. but I could do a little bit on vastus lateralis, and then I've got all my other positions that I can do that are stronger, which I'm gonna show, I've written them on the board, I'm gonna show you after. Would you do any work either side of the IT band, or you would just kind of yeah, not do you, too much? you can do, because the, what you, what, when you look, if you get, ever get the chance to go and see cross sections, you'll see yeah. there's no space. So the, 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 the understanding, the belief of, of, of myofascial stuff is everything is connected. So if your myofascial tension is in your gastrocnemius, because it crosses the knee and it's in proximity to the hamstrings, the hamstrings will be affected. If gastroc can't do his job, hamstrings get affected. And hamstrings will affect glutes, and glutes will affect lower back, and lower back will affect upper back, etc., etc. So if this fascia is tight... It's, it's expectate, the expectation of the area means that other areas will have to compensate. So the tension there will have a knock-on effect. We are effectively all fascia in together. And if she is tight, we can't do our job. <laughs> because we're all, there are no, you don't ever cut open and go, oh, look, there's a great big gap. Look at that hole, I wonder what that hole's for. Cadbury's cream eggs. No, everything's connected. So if one area is short and tight, whatever's near it is short and tight. Yeah, okay. So, now go back onto your back for me, and then from there, then I can adjust my tail back to this one, pull this one out, and then from here, sorry, I can go back to wherever I need it to be. Yeah? They're a little bit extras for you to practice, and as I say, when I'm showing you the basic back of leg routine, I'm going to go through additional skills. I would normally teach these as part of a level four course to be advanced routines, and you would see the whole routine. I haven't got time to do the whole routine with you. But by showing you what those are, they come directly after basic. You can then do a little bit of deeper stuff, like uh, Nate was alluding to, and stuff he's doing already, with justification that it's safe and progressive. Right, so I've just finished my leg routine on the front. I now need to turn the client over. The easiest way to do that, the easiest way, is put that one back to the start position. There's the top of my towel. Come back to start position. So that one there is the warmth one. That's the modesty one. So what I'm going to do is take that hand out. I'm going to do a three-point contact. Lean, lean. So I've got two hands on the outside holding the towels where they cross over. And I'm leaning in the middle. That shoulder over. Over we go. So as she rolls, she rolls away from me. She stays under the towel. Keep going all the way into the front. That's it. <laughs> so she's now into the position of the posterior leg. Okay, so, face in the hole. Get yourself comfy. Right, it's the same principle. The bottom is totally. wider and taller than everything else, so I know where it is. And then lift. It's even got, like, martial arts going on. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> so, like, dinner time, not it? <laughs> right, relax. So, you make a nice leg. And then pull up. Now we know that the shoe got shorts on. 
what we do is we normally pull until we see the crease where the gluteal line is. If I tuck into here, there is that crease. It's the crease at the bottom, okay? So the crease at the bottom, because when the person bends their leg, bends your leg, that is where, so that crease is just a fraction higher, is where the ischial tuberosity is. And the ischial tuberosity is where the hamstrings start. So you've got three hamstrings, semimembranosis, semitendinosis, biceps femoris. Can I just have access to this area here? Because the bottom picture's on there. <laughs> so if you have a look, there's my bottom, that's my ilium, and that's my ischium, and that's my, let's say my trochanter, so greater and lesser trochanter, and then that comes down onto my tibia and my fibula. So the issue of tuberosity is here, so semimembranosis is the most medial hamstring, semimembranosis, and the way you remember it is semi mem it's, it's got an m in the middle of it now he's not the only medial hamstring sitting on top of him is semi tendinosis so i've done semi mem in the middle semi ten is on top so you, so you when you look at the hamstrings semi membranosis looks like that semi tendinosis sits on top so you, you sort of see half one half the other yeah and then right next to those you've got biceps femoris and biceps femoris has got two heads the long head is on the issue of tuberosity. The short head is on linea aspera, which is the posterior groove on the back of the femur. And all it does is it pro provides a greater surface area for contact. So it's like a ridge that the bones, the muscles attach to. So biceps femoris, that comes to the head of the fib. So biceps femoris is on the outside, so he's lateral. Now, semi tendinosis on top of semi mem. You've got IT in the middle, so you know they all start the issue of tuberosity. And then biceps femoris is down there. That is your lateral one. And they are both medial. It's important to know. If someone comes to you and says, my hamstrings hurt, that's like saying, I live in Croydon. I live in Crystal Palace. You need to be more specific. Yeah? What I need to know is, is where exactly does it hurt on the medial side, the lateral side? Now it's on the medial side. I know it's more likely to be semi-membranosis, semi-tendinosis. And the stretches I would do, my leg position would be affected. If it's biceps femoris, it's a lateral side. Yeah? Now, if I get Kate to bend her leg, so ready? Bend your leg for me. There is the divide line. So you can see, just relax. That little line here is the middle of the medial and the lateral hamstrings. If we follow up, then, okay, that's the ridge of getting relaxed. So that is where the tendons are. So they all work, the medial ones are going from here, the lateral ones are going from here, and they all work up to that central one. Bend your leg, there's the ridge, and that's where they're working to. So just, uh, Giselle, give me your finger there. Relax, put the fingers right there. Bend your leg, and relax, you feel it? Tendons hold on, it's their job. You could have the strongest muscle in the world. I don't know who the strongest person is, but whoever can make their biceps the tightest with a great big there's still going to be a squeezability in that muscle why muscle is excitable it's stretchy it's flexible it's extendable even the strongest muscle has a squeeziness to it but a tendon even the weakest tendon goes like rock so what happens is you know you're on a tendon bend your leg for me the muscles look i can push them but the tendon when you go onto the tendon it resists you because his job is to hold on if I stretch my leg, the muscle will stretch, the tendon says, time to hold on now. It doesn't stretch the same way. The tendon is trying to do its job. So the best way to stretch tendons is passively. So when we've done our basic routine, I always do stretching of the tendon, a little bit of thumb strip on the tendon to stretch it passively when the muscle's not under tension. Does that make sense? Okay, so towel support goes under the knee when the person's face up as under the ankle when the person's face down. Now I normally towel support one leg when they're face up, but I normally towel support both legs when they're face down. If you look at the shape of the foot, because of the, the right angle at the ankle, lift up both legs for me, and down we go. Because of the foot, there's no space. So what you do is, if you let the person lie flat on the bed, you're opening out the, the anterior tibial fibular ligament and the anterior tibial ligament, and that's not comfortable. 
being in that open position. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you let the person have a comfortable position, so, so there, there's something underneath the anterior bar, it will feel more supported. It also, by putting the knee in slight flexion, shortens the hammies, which we're about to press. Okay, make sense? Good. So, who's got oil? Have we got any? I've got a top. <laughs> I'm quite loving some oil, if anyone's got any. Oh, you want oil oil? Call me old-fashioned. It says on the, on the, on the criteria, it's, what have you got, lotion? No, it says oil here. Is it oil? It's not oil. Okay, perfect. It says on the old paperwork. Don't uh, bring it. It's the work of the devil, don't bring lo oil, yeah. bring lotion. The reason for that is, is that some teachers who teach undergraduates mm -hmm. allow those people to walk in, abuse the room, and to, to go, and they, they don't feel it's their job to sort them out. I can't help but be on top of it. So if you make a mess, there's no way you're getting out that door mm -hmm. without tidying it up. If you put oil on the floor, if you open your bottle of oil like it's some sort of Grand Prix and you're spraying it everywhere, <laughs> we'll have a conversation. If you leave your station messy, I'm going to be telling you, what, what do you think you're playing at? It's tidy, no, I'm not doing it. Tidy that up or don't bring oil. It's because people... So what happens is the cleaners come in and they complain. We will never leave the room in a mess. That's because you're with me. It's not going to happen. So I'm trusting. Nate is an adult. I'm trusting. If Nate brings oil, when he leaves... Yes. It looks like a nice area afterwards, and it isn't messy. And then, then it's okay. Yeah? Thank it's you. like having a drink in here. If you come in, and as you drink your drink, you go, Achoo! and it goes everywhere. <laughs> if you just left it, that's why there's a no eating or drinking in the room room. Yeah. If you tidy it up, it's common sense. It's yeah. okay. Thanks. Thank so, you. So, here we go with the oil. Yeah, it looks like oil. <laughs> Maybe it's white oil. <laughs> so I'm going. Yeah. Lotions on the hands. It's going to look a bit messy because we're going to redistribute them colours, but it should go quite quickly. I go on to hamstrings first. What type of technique is that? I suppose. That's pretty good. It has got an oily filter, actually. Yeah. So it's effleurage. What type of effleurage? Double opposing. That's opposing hands. Thank you. I like a person who answers straight away. People who whisper. Don't want you to know what they're saying. That's why they're whispering. People who aren't sure just hide. They go like that. <laughs> and people who ask for just going. I don't care. Just say the answer because if you're wrong, we correct it. If you're right, you get a little bit more respect than the others. So opposing hands. What's this one called? Hand leading hands. Thank you. So I'm now going to go a little bit deeper. Let me know if the pressure's okay. Pressure's all right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm now going to go to reinforce. Deep breath in and breathe out. She hasn't got the visual cue. She can't see me anymore. So I start with that deep breath in and breathe out. It gives her a time frame of work. Deep breath in and breathe out. Deep breath in and breathe out. So now she doesn't have that not knowing anticipation tension where the person squeezes in the bottom and then is all a bit rigid. Yes? Okay. From there, by manual. My bi-manual, no slapping noise, why I'm reaching past towards the heart. Tell me when you feel warm. <coughs> Feels warm. I know it does because my hands feel warm. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to knead. And when I'm kneading, I'm trying to pick and lift. It's harder on the hammies because they're more cord-like. Is the pressure okay? Okay, it's not too firm. Good. So I'm picking and lifting. I'm counting to 20 again. Then when I get to 20, I'm going into my ringing with my fingers and thumbs in line, not sticking out the sides. Pressure okay? Yes, fine. What comes next? Ringing. Hacking. Hacking. What comes next? Cupping. Can you hear the, the, the cupping sound? I think that's why they call it cupping. I don't know. It's just a logistics. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they would have called it. Sounds a bit like slapping. <laughs> Hacking sounds a bit like slapping and beating. <laughs> beating. Do you go up the lateral side My or you don't bother? My hands work wide here. So, so that you cover a big moon, area. Semi tendo are there. Mm -hmm. Biceps and Morris is there. Okay. So I'm pretty much working here. I get them other ones when I'm doing anterior leg. So you can ah. see me adjust much more around when they're face up. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the toes are up, you can affect the leg with internal and external rotation. Yeah. Okay, so after that one, 
What do I do? Afarage. Afarage. And then I do the same three things, but now where there's more muscle. So on the front, you're all a little bit, what do we do below the knee? Here, there's a good bulk of muscle there. So you repeat. So it's going to be Afarage. Deeper Afarage. Reinforce Afarage. Deep breath in. And breathe out. Deep breath in. 